Only investigating the social situation of the making of pidgin and without raising the question of its structure, its syntax, and its logic. It's simply assumed both to be subsequent and subordinate to the standard in its givenness. Is it possible for the new returnee actually to think about pigeon? Another way to put it is that Fanon prepares us for Glissant in his lysis of this morbid body, which begins with an attention to language that is then carried through in his investigation of the structure of epidermalization, of which the supposed imposition of pigeon and the imposition of the desire for French in their inter and animation form a kind of verbal supplement and servant. And what I'm trying to do is to think the problematic of pigeon precisely in terms of how it's, it's, it sets us up for the sort of classic staging of the violent encounter with otherness that Fanon gets to um, in, in chapter five. So this will be another, the last long quote from Fanon. Um, and of course, you'll all remember it or know it already anyway. Dirty nigger, or simply look, a Negro. I came into this world anxious to uncover the meaning of things. My soul desires to be at the origin of the world. And here I am, an object among other objects. Locked in this suffocating reification, I appealed to the other so that his liberating gaze, gliding over my body suddenly smoothed of rough edges, would give me back the lightness of being I thought I had lost, and taking me out of the world put me back in the world. But just as I get to the other slope, I stumble, and the other fixes me with his gaze, his gestures, and attitude, the same way you fix a preparation with a die. I lose my temper, demand an explanation, nothing doing. I explode. Here are the fragments put together by another me. As long as the black man remains on his home territory, except for petty internal quarrels, he will not have to experience his being for others. There is, in fact, a being for other, as described by Hegel, but any ontology is made impossible in a colonized and acculturated society. Apparently, those who have written on the subject have not taken this sufficiently into consideration. In the Weltanschauung of a colonized people, there is an impurity or a flaw that prohibits any ontological explanation. Perhaps it could be argued that this is true for any individual, but such an argument would be concealing the basic problem. Ontology does not allow us to understand the being of the black man since it ignores the lived experience. For not only must the black man be black, he must be black in relation to the white man. Some people will argue that the situation has a double meaning. Not at all. The black man has no ontological resistance in the eyes of the white man. From one day to the next, the blacks have had to deal with two systems of reference. Their metaphysics, or less potentially their customs and the agencies to which they refer, were abolished because they were in a contradiction with a new civilization that imposed its own. In the 20th century, the black man on his home territory is oblivious of the moment when his inferiority is determined by the other. Naturally, we have had the opportunity to discuss the black problem with, with friends, and less often with African Americans. Together, we proclaimed loud and clear the equality of man in the world. In the Antilles, there is also that minor tension between the cliques of white Creoles, mulattoes, and blacks, but we were content to intellectualize these differences. In fact, there was nothing dramatic about them. And then, and then we were given the occasion to confront the white gaze. An unusual weight descended on us. The real world robbed us of our share. In the white world, the man of color encounters difficulties in elaborating his body schema. The image of one's body is solely negating. It's an image in the third person. All around the body reigns an atmosphere of certain uncertainty. 
I know that if I want to smoke, I shall have to stretch out my right arm and grab the pack of cigarettes lying at the other end of the table. As for the matches, they are in the left drawer, and I shall have to move back a little. And I make all these moves, not out of habit, but by implicit knowledge. A slow construction of myself as a body in a spatial and temporal world, such seems to be the schema. It is not imposed on me. It is rather a definitive structuring of myself and the world. Definitive because it creates a genuine dialectic between my body and the world. For some years now, certain laboratories have been searching for a denigrification serum. In all seriousness, they have been rinsing out their test tubes and adjusting their scales and have begun research on how the wretched black man could whiten himself and thus rid himself of the burden of his body, of this bodily curse. Beneath the bodily schema, I had created a historical racial schema. The data I used were provided not by remnants of feelings and notions of the tactile, vestibular, kinesthetic, or visual nature, but by the other, the white man, who had woven me out of a thousand details, anecdotes, and stories. I thought I was being asked to construct a psychological self, to balance space and, local, and localized sensations, when all the time they were clamoring for more. Look, a Negro. It was a passing sting. I attempted to smile. Look, a Negro. Absolutely. I was beginning to enjoy myself. Look, a Negro. The circle was gradually getting smaller. I was really enjoying myself. Mama, look, a Negro. I'm scared. 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 Now they were beginning to be scared of me. I wanted to kill myself laughing. But laughter had become out of the question. Fanon investigates what it is to be eager to grasp, to uncover, while having been robbed of the capacity to have a share. No past, no future, non-existent. My originality had been snatched from me. The failed natality of the fabricated explodes so that the mechanism, the instrument, the toy, can, at the very least, piece itself together. This is the itinerary of Fanon's black deconstruction, which ends in an image of inquisitive reassembly, as if the futurial project of blackness that he forecloses was always meant to live on only in and through him. The reification he decries suffocates in the absence of other aspiration. This attends the bodily schema's collapse into an epidermal racial schema. In the aftermath of this interplay of implosion and explosion, Fanon's lesson takes the form of a post-mortem reconstruction. This is forensic phenomenology, autopsy, eyewitness, unflinching determination of the cause of our sociality, which is taken for our death, given in or initiated by a metaphorics of biochemistry and supplemented by figures of text and textile. <laughs> The pigmentation alluded to at the beginning will now be applied to a newly woven cloth so that livery can be made in the service of a strict visual determination. Fanon sees it all so clearly now, and the irony, of course, is that the eyes he sees with are not his. One sees only from the other's perspective, with the other's instruments, that which is of the other's fabrication. How do we account for this forced 